Roger, 9 Heavy Anchorage Tower, Roger, uh, runway 33, clear to land, wind 01041, gust 53. Yeah, no, that was 62. I appreciate uh, you guys working with me. Uh, did you guys uh, end up having to uh, step out of the tower? Not yet. Not uh, yet. We have, uh, we have, we're down to mid Manning, though, uh, up here for now. We've sent everybody else down to the break, or down downstairs. A few people start to get nauseous and whatnot. A major windstorm underway in Alaska as we get that drainage of considerable Arctic air from the interior as a deep low pressure system goes by in the Gulf of Alaska. At this hour, winds are gusting up to 50 to 60 miles an hour around Anchorage. There's the METAR observation, 45 knots. But as you go up into the Kanik Arm, Wasilla showing gusts to 63 knots, which is over 70 miles an hour. Down in the lower 48, many problems of our own. A deep low pressure system moving through Ontario at this hour, blizzard conditions back into the Great Lakes and into the Midwest, and numerous reports of sub-zero temperatures. That zero line runs from about Cleveland down to, well, south of Ohio, through much of Kentucky, and back over to Springfield, and then arcing up into Rapid City. So we're starting to see a little bit of a warm up in this area here. Montana still hanging on to some cold weather, minus 26 this morning. And down in Texas, we got down to single digits and teens. Lots of sunshine, though, so we're starting to see those 20s appearing. And the front itself already blasting south into Mexico. And in the lower Rio Grande Valley, temperatures down to freezing. The leading edge of the front moving through Florida this afternoon here. And meanwhile, up in the northeastern U.S., a rapid change from 50s, rain, mild conditions for December, to blizzard conditions out there in upstate New York. We'll take a closer look at that in just a minute. Let's take a look out west. Not much going on. The tail end of the front has sunk into the Great Basin area. Still hanging on to that Thule fog in central California. Temperatures in the 30s and 40s. So some cool weather out there in California. And then going up the boundary, there's our potent system in Alaska. The pressure gradient between that 984 millibar low and the former 1050 millibar high up in Yukon, that creates a very tight pressure gradient. And finally, the winds are on the move. We've got that momentum of dense air coming out of the interior, and that's helping to get those winds going. In northern Canada, quite cold. We're seeing minus 40s up there in Melville Island, minus 20s, minus 30s elsewhere, but we did drain out a huge amount of that volume of Arctic air into the U.S., so we're heading into a bit of a recovery period going into the Christmas holidays. There's a look at that massive system in the northeastern U.S., definitely dominating the charts. Let's zoom in on that. There you go. We're looking at the 850 millibar heights, which is at about 5,000 feet, and the temperature. And shaded, the blues and reds, indicating the temperature advection. So it's pretty easy to guess where the fronts are. Somewhat like that, and roughly like that. You can have advection south of the boundaries, but the stronger advection is going to be north of those fronts. So the bulk of the cold air advection moving into Virginia, the Carolinas, and the southeastern U.S., and warm advection wrapping around the north side of the storm. That's part of that warm conveyor belt. And that interplay of hot and cold air is what gives us a bear clinic system. That's a classic deep frontal system. And uh, this is definitely a spectacular example. So we'll go ahead and take you through the sequence by evening. Around the time many of you are watching this program, most of the strongest cold air advection moving off of the northeastern coast, that front pretty much barreling right through New England. And in its wake, lots of cold air moving in. Even though it's not blue back here, the blue shading indicates advection. So here, it's very cold but the temperatures are kind of settling down because the gradient, the, uh, the thermal gradients are weakening way back in that part of the system. So if we continue this forward, 
kind of a moderating trend, and we start to see downslope flow setting in in the northern plains. That'll lead to a warm-up. We're looking at uh, about 6 p.m. on New Year's Eve. And another thing that we see here is a strong westerly component. So we're not really talking about the upper air, we're talking about the lower levels, and that just means downslope flow from the Rockies, kind of a warm pattern, and then up in the northeastern U.S. that will continue to be cold as we erode the last of that Arctic air. And you can see an Alberta Clipper developing here. See that moving southward through the North Plains? Fronts are probably about like that right there. Low pressure area near Fargo. We're looking at the evening of Christmas, and that Alberta Clipper will move southeast bring clouds and maybe some snow flurries. Have to look at the temperatures to be sure. And that kind of opens up into a trough. And you can see the last of it right there. So that is going to be decaying. And then we get back into that downslope flow once again for the 27th. So a continued warming trend. And you can see how active it gets out there in the Pacific. Very strong westerly flow. And that'll shift us around to a Pacific type of pattern. And you can even see up in the Canada-U.S. border region a southerly component. So that's definitely going to spell a major pattern change over the next few days. And by the time we get up to Wednesday, a couple of low pressure areas from the Pacific, deep southerly flow from Texas, and uh, fronts probably running something like that. So what a difference a few days makes. Let's take a look at the 500 millibar chart. This is going to be heights and temperature at 500 millibars, which is about 18,000 feet. So this is the middle of the troposphere. Now, you may be wondering about the winds, the jet streams. We can actually infer that using this chart. See how those heights are packed close together, and even more so down there in Tennessee. That's indicating the position of the jet. We don't analyze the jet at the 500 millibar level, but we can see a reflection of it, and that's what we're picking up on this chart. So it's a very versatile product, and we can see that it connects back into the Pacific like that. Also, a segment of the polar vortex across the Midwest, 508 decameter low in Chicago. And as we go into the evening, it moves into New York and continues to deepen down to 501 decameters. Still getting that northwesterly flow in the northern plains and starting to see some ridging building into the western U.S. and that is associated with warm air. Now, we're up to Christmas Eve. This is Saturday morning. And somewhere in here, up in western Canada, we're gonna see the ingredients that help get that Alberta Clipper going. And it could be this little wave right here. You can see some stronger winds aloft reflected by that tighter height field and the cyclonic turning of the height field. So that's going to indicate a short wave moving through the flow. It appears to be moving about right there into southeastern British Columbia early on Christmas, and then it starts its dive into the plains. And that's where it links up with that low-level cyclogenesis. We're going to find that out ahead of the wave in this area here, a bit of frontogenesis also developing, and that moves southeastward. And as we know from the earlier chart, that does tend to weaken. Then we start seeing some ridging into the plains itself, the heights starting to come up, a little bit of warming, and the weather gets busy out there on the west coast. So we're shifting our attention from the north to the west. So it's going to get stormy out there in the west from the 28th to the 29th, and we start seeing some very strong troughing out west for the 29th. So it looks like the plains, the central U.S., is going to be getting some more significant weather, but that's a pretty deep fetch from the southwest, so that could be more of a tropical, maybe even a spring-like type weather pattern. But that's 180 hours out. We're not going to worry about that until next week. So let's put it together and look at the forecast. Starting out midday, lots of snow into the Great Lakes and along the southern periphery, 
no snow being created, but it is being blown around by those strong winds. So lots of drifting snow all the way down towards the Ohio River. And that front will continue marching through the Hudson River region. Let's take a look at the surface chart. Yeah, this has changed a lot since the last time I looked at it. This is going to be mid-afternoon here. The front, from what I can tell, this is the first time I've looked at this analysis, uh, it's going to run about like that. Looks like it just passed New York. And you can see the transition from 40s out to the east to 30s and 20s and teens as you go further west. And snow all the way back, well behind that front. So some hazardous conditions driving west and hopefully not too many people on the road. So going into the evening hours, we're going to rapidly get into cold air advection through all of the northeastern U.S. Still got a deep low up there in Quebec and Ontario, and that will help keep the tight pressure gradients going all the way through the Great Lakes and Midwest. And of course, with that, a lot of that snow will continue to be picked up into the evening. And finally, tomorrow, Christmas Eve, we'll start to see things slacken. The central U.S. looking pretty good there, falling under that 1040 millibar ridge going all the way down to Texas. And on the other side, starting to develop that southerly flow in the high plains. So switching over into Christmas looks pretty good across much of the country. Some showers in the northwest as the warm air advection starts setting up in that region, clearing out the Arctic air in British Columbia as well. And then we see that Alberta clipper coming together. That's it right there. And we can watch that come on down south. So that'll be the main thing of interest. On Christmas Day, snow showers all the way from the Dakotas into Illinois and Kentucky. And then you see it start to weaken as it loses upper air support. And then our attention, of course, shifts back into California. Looks like another atmospheric river. Let's take a look at the IVT values. Yeah, and here's where the fun starts up from the west. Strong IVT values coming in for Christmas Eve. And those values are about 700 to 800. That's definitely supportive of at least some localized flooding. And then as we go into the 26th, 27th, 28th, it looks like things get even worse in Northern California and Central California. So we're up to about the 27th here, and those are some very high IVT values, 1,200 to 1,400. And of course, they do taper off as we start to get more of a westerly flow there. But even down in the LA area, some values of about 500. So it looks like all of California could get a pretty good rain for next week. Let's take a look at how those temperatures are stacking up for Christmas Eve tomorrow. Lots of cold weather on the East Coast. Some records being broken for the day in North Carolina down to the single digits and minus four up at Wheeling, West Virginia. Christmas Eve will be milder across much of the country. Still hanging on to a little bit of that cold there in the Dakotas and on the Carolinas coast. And then on the 26th, Boxing Day in the Commonwealth countries, starting to see some warm weather appearing in Arizona, 71 there around Blythe and 21, still some cold weather in South Carolina. The 27th is when our focus is shifting to the west. However, much of the country will be near seasonal normals. For Wednesday, much of the same. And for the 29th, as we approach the new year, still looking fairly mild. However, there's those QPFs already getting some rain up there around Seattle and Vancouver. And as the next system comes in for the 27th and 28th, heavy rains there in California up to three to four inches in many areas and even more coming up for the day six and day seven period. And you can see as that tropical fetch gets going in Texas around about a week from now, could be some heavy rains in East Texas, Arkansas, and Louisiana. So that'll be something to keep an eye on. 
And that's all for this edition of Forecast Live. Thanks very much to our Patreon supporters. Also, thanks to Bill Johnson for the great contribution. Hope everybody has a great Christmas weekend. Take care, and we'll see you back here in a few days. Bye-bye.